All right, this is it, moment of truth. The iPhone XS and XS Max are here, and with it, the new Apple A12 Bionic chip, the most advanced chip in a smartphone to date. Seven nanometer, a new construction, an additional gigabyte of RAM. These are absolute powerhouses of phones, and let's see how they perform. So obviously, the main competitor is gonna be last year's iPhone X with the Apple A11 chip before we go into testing any other competitors, and I just wanna see how much of an evolution is it. Apple said it's a 15% faster top end core and how that translates to day-to-day -day usage is roughly 30% faster in opening your apps that already existed. I want to see, is that really true? Can we really see a 30% difference or what kind of a difference will we see? Without a doubt, Apple is the best in the game when it comes to chips, but how they translate that through software into their new iPhones is yet to be seen. And these are Apple's most expensive iPhones ever, the XS Max starting at $1,099. So you definitely want to get the best bang for your buck. Now, when it comes to speed test records, the iPhone X was near the top, OnePlus 6 with its shortened animations, definitely the fastest, and round two for the iPhone X was never good because of the lack of RAM. Let's see if that additional gigabyte of RAM on the XS and XS Max really makes a difference here. This year, the new Apple A12 is a 2.49 gigahertz for the top end cores. We don't know the spec of the lower end cores. It does have an additional gigabyte of RAM. It is running iOS 12 and seven nanometers. So let's see how that all translates with a day-to-day -day usage test. This is basically the applications you're going to be running always Snapchat, Instagram, your social media, go into the camera, take a picture real quick, navigate using Google Maps, and both here are incredibly fast. This is an 8K image, by the way, editing that and exporting via Photoshop is a breeze for these newer ones, starting to load something a little bit heavier like Minecraft. You can see they do start to slow down a little bit. Now, this application has been out way longer, optimized for the iPhone 10, and that goes for all of these. So this may improve yet in the future on the iPhone XS Max once all of the developers start taking advantage of that extra gigabyte of RAM and the differences in the screen size and whatnot. But then again, that scales. So I don't think that's relevant. Anyways, we do have Asphalt 9 here just released. So the latest version, it is a quite heavy application. The XS Max powers through it, no problem. Meanwhile, the iPhone 10 struggles. It's actually actually gotten left behind here. San Andreas, not very much optimization for the newer phones, but still runs like a champ. I definitely am seeing a difference here on the heavier applications. They are loading faster on the XS Max. It's the light applications that I can't really tell a difference. Spotify already on the iPhone XS Max. Meanwhile, the iPhone X is still on San Andreas. Already doing some shopping on Amazon, SoundCloud, and it's pushing ahead here. Now, the one area where the iPhone XS Max is going to destroy the iPhone X is in the video editing. This is the 4K, about a minute and a half clip that I use always, but this is the fastest I've ever seen any iPhone handle it. Compiles it ridiculously fast, and then it exports also extremely fast. And the iPhone X has never been slow. The fastest I've ever seen it was on iOS 12, it certainly won't be getting slow anytime soon, especially after an update to iOS 12. It really brings new life to it, and hopefully Apple keeps that support going and keeping improving it always. And the iPhone XS Max is now saving the video. 10 is compiling it, so not too far behind, but still the XS Max is just that much faster. It finishes round one with a two minute and 10 second score. Now the applications at the very beginning all needed to be reloaded. As you can see, that's some unnecessary time being wasted. It seems like that four gigabytes of RAM, additional gigabytes, by didn't make as much of a difference as I had thought. I uh, still had to reload even Minecraft. So that's a bit surprising. I really expected better things here. The iPhone 10 is still saving that video very, very slowly. Really makes you go wow at the speed of the 10s Max. Now where the apps were already preloaded was Mario Run. Keep that in mind here while the iPhone 10 finishes round one with two minutes and 44 seconds. Also, all of those applications needed to be reloaded in the backgrounds. Now, on the XS Max, all the apps after Mario Run were already there preloaded, and it finished with a round two of 43 seconds. So not too great, not the fastest, definitely, but uh, it did well, and I'm sure with further optimization of many of the apps and iOS, it will be better in the future, like the iPhone 10 was. The iPhone 10 continues to reload all of those applications, and the most surprising thing for me was after Minecraft, Mario Run was also not preloaded, so I needed to load that, but 
past that, everything was loaded. The difference that one gigabyte of RAM made was that one extra application was open in the background after a heavy 4K video editing session. You know, for an additional gigabyte of RAM, I expected much, much more, but uh, again, I'm sure Apple will get on that and improve it with time, so we'll have to compare it to this score in the future. Anyways, all the apps were preloaded after that, finished with about a minute score on round two. All right, so Apple did make some claims regarding the app launch times on the iPhone XS series. They said it'd be about 30% faster for your applications. So let's launch some applications with the apps which are cleared. Snapchat, one, two, and mm, about the same. Instagram, one, two. These are web-based. <laughs> did load smidget faster here, one, two. Camera, about the same with the rear. Let's uh, open it with the front one, one, two. Yeah, so about the same there. Google Maps, one, two. Uh, smidget faster, just a little, little bit here. Photoshop Express, exactly just like a little bit faster, but it doesn't seem like it'd be enough to make a difference. And saving this one, two. 8K image, almost identical. Minecraft, one, two. And so let's see what we got here. So this is a slightly larger app. Yep, a little bit faster as you guys can see. And let's see the world, one, two. This is building with the uh, furthest draw distance. Uh, just a hair faster here. Asphalt 9, one, two. And this is a pretty large application. One of the largest I'll be testing. Just, uh, just came out brand new, so probably not too optimized for both, but did load faster considerably on the iPhone XS Max. Wow, that's quite the difference here. It's like a full 10 seconds. So for the heavy apps, looks like the XS Max definitely makes a difference. One, two, Netflix, web-based. Yeah, just about the same, 10 coming in first. And Grand Theft Auto, one, two, loading the actual game. Look at that, it does have a slight lead here. Cool, so that is a little bit faster too. It's the heavy apps. One, two, and Zynga Poker, web-based, but still in the lead on the XS Max. Wow, quite the lead too. Spotify, one, two, a little bit faster. So see that little delay between launching it and actually loading? I feel like that'll add up and compound over time. It'll save you a lot of, a lot of time in the long run here. So the general consensus I'm getting is that if you're gonna be loading heavier games, very heavy applications and video editing in general, the iPhone XS Max will really shine there. But for social media, just general browsing and usability, it's such a small difference. There is one, mind you, but it's so small that I wouldn't even consider that between upgrading from a 10 to 10S, you know, unless you're really, really using the crap out of it all the time. Anyways, so uh, let's go to the browser here and launch apple.com, one, two, hmm, about the same. And bring a trailer.com, one, two. Uh, loaded faster on the 10. And ebay.com, one, two. Hmm, 10 still. Hmm, interesting result here. Again, this might be something to do with the optimization just because Apple's, you know, been working on the iPhone 10 just a little bit longer, well, not a little, a whole year longer than the XS Max. And I'm sure with future software updates, it will get more and more optimized. All right, so moment of truth with that Geekbench. Let's go ahead and uh, clear the app switcher out actually for all of these and then run that Geekbench. From what I've heard, it's not all that much higher from last year's iPhone 10, but I'd like to see the difference. And oh man, this is really, really ticking me off. The display keeps dimming for no reason. Something to do with the sensors, I don't know. Some software issue I've had for the longest time, iOS 12 didn't fix it. And uh, yeah, forgive me for that darker display. Anyways, here are the scores and yeah, they are higher, but not considerably so. I mean, this is like 550 points higher, um, this one, Know, about a thousand points higher. It's, it's nowhere near as much as you'd think. Apple did say that the top end cores are 15% faster than the iPhone 10, and I guess there is a slight difference here. It's definitely not 15%, it's a little bit under, but you know, it is faster. What can I say? And I'm sure the scores will improve with time here. And there is that N2 to score. So a beastly 242,000 versus the iPhone 10's 116,000. That is just crazy. Let's take a look at those individual scores. CPU got a higher mark. GPU, look at that difference. That's insane. And uh, 
memory obviously it has a little bit more here so very very awesome and i'm excited to see the evolution of the 10s max in the optimization department so that's a bit strange i do have gigabit internet but neither one of these is able to come close to the speeds of it might be a software cap or something. I'm, I'm really not sure here, it's very strange. All right, so next up, let's try out Face ID. Apple did claim Face ID is now faster and even more secure on the iPhone XS series, but they didn't elaborate by how much. Let's see if we can uh, see that difference here. And I do have to kind of cross my eyes here. I'll try it with this method and then separately. One, two, three. Yeah, it's a little hard to get this synchronized. One, two, three. Hmm, exactly the same in this one. One, two, three. Yeah, I could hardly say that it's faster on the Tennis Max. One, two, three. Mm, exactly the same. All right, now I'm gonna try and separately and then I'll edit them side by side. Okay, one, two, three. So Face ID is fast, but it doesn't seem like much, much faster than the iPhone 10. All right, guys, so there it is, the iPhone 10s in the ultimate speed test. I gotta say, yes, it is absolutely faster. It's even faster in day-to-day -day opening apps. I wouldn't say 30% faster unless it's a very heavy application. You're definitely not gonna notice or see that 30% difference opening up Snapchat or Instagram. The biggest difference on the iPhone 10s is the 4K video editing output, downsampling to 1080p. It is an absolute monster when it comes to that, so. You know, working with heavy loads, the iPhone XS certainly is way faster than the 10. but if you're coming from a 10 to 10S expecting to see major differences in day-to-day -day usage, you really won't. And even the RAM management wasn't that great with an additional gigabyte of RAM, something that really surprised me. But overall, yes, it is faster. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this speed test. Stay tuned for more videos. Peace.